Hello everyone, Razorblade Mango here, and today I am here to talk about the long-awaited sequel to the DS cult classic from Square Enix, The World Ends With You, Neo, The World Ends With You. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I should just cut right to the chase, but I'm kind of... I don't know. I'm just... <sighs> this is the first game in quite a while, probably since 2019, that I can say is disappointing to the point of bumming me out. Because I really want to come here and talk to you guys about it. Because I have a lot to say about it. But just... It's tough getting the words out. Because it just, even though I consciously know that I want to come here and make this video and talk to you guys about it, my heart just isn't really into it because I'm just sad. It just makes me sad that I don't, that, that after all this time, after all this waiting, after all these years, I can come here and say, hey, there exists a sequel to The World Ends With You, and I don't like it. So, there's nothing really more depressing to someone who plays video games than when a sequel that they've been waiting for for a long time comes out and it just misses the mark for said person. So, alright. Um, yeah, I, you know, I got what I wanted in the end, <laughs> you know, I've been waiting for a sequel to The World Ends With You for a long time, because I am a fan of the original DS game, and that game is a lot of fun, but I just, I don't know, it, 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 it to me it just comes across, I can imagine somebody watching this video and, you know, thinking me ungrateful for the fact that I'm going to sit here and spend most of this video complaining about the sequel. But, you know what I always say, it's just, you know, you're not really a fan of something if you aren't willing to criticize it. And I am a fan of The World Ends With You, but I have, really have no qualms with taking its sequel to task over some big messed ups that I see in it. So, I can sum up Neo... The world ends with you pretty easily with a comparison. So imagine an apple. And in the center of that apple, there is a really solid core. And that would be this game's gameplay. And then you have the outside, the skin of the apple. It's red, it's luscious, it's beautiful. It's just, it's like, oh man, it's so inviting. And just like, wow, you just can't wait your, to sink your teeth into it. But then you actually start sinking your teeth into it. And the excellent skin, the outer layer, gives way to the fruit in between. And it's just really mushy and unpleasant. And it just really isn't all that sweet. And in the case of Neo The World Ends With You, it's everything from the structure to the pacing to the storytelling, to the characters, to the writing, it just, it just is not there compared to the original. And I'll say this about the game, though, is that it visually, musically, yeah, it's very sound. It, it, it does a, an impeccable job of translating the style from the original into this new, I guess, quasi-AAA version of it. The visuals are all clean and just look really nice. It runs at a flawless 60 frames on the PS4. The music from, you know, Ta Takeharu Ishimoto just is banging. It, even, like, the, the remixes of the classic songs just put a big smile on my face whenever I heard them. And just surface level wise there's really nothing wrong with this game at all and even even at its core like i said the the 
gameplay. And I was really nervous that they were just going to turn this into some mindless hack and slash from the gameplay I saw in the very first trailer. But I thought they did a really good job of translating the pin-driven gameplay from the original into this more action-focused, hack-and-slashy kind of thing. And it works better than I anticipated. It's really fun leveling up the pins, trying different combos, exploiting the weaknesses of enemies and bosses so you're able to get a tactical advantage. It's just a really cool combat system that Square Enix have developed for this and Hand, Hand as well. And when it actually lets you do a lot of combat, the game can be really fun. And there is a lot of fun to be had in Neo The World Ends With You when the game gets out of its own way to let you actually play it. Because I spent, I must have spent like a, a good long while grinding in this game and getting all kinds of pins and leveling up the pins. And it didn't feel like a chore doing that because of how much fun I was having with the combat. Um, but aside from just the occasional annoyance with being able to visually read what's going on with the enemies, there really isn't, again, there's not a whole lot of negative things I can say about the gameplay. It's just everything else just sucks. <laughs> like, it's just, ugh, the, the writing is bland and boring. The structure is annoying. The pacing is aggravating. The storytelling is just so predictable and bland. And the characters this time around just, when they, even, the, just, without the novelty of the returning characters, and I'm not going to spoil who comes back in this game, if it really, if it didn't have any of the returning characters and it was just these new characters... Oh man, it would have just been just pain to get through this dialogue and these boring ass people with the exception of one. There's one interesting new character in this game and it's like they're not in it enough to really they're not a party member, which I think is my big problem. It's like they're a side character and it's just ah when they appear the screen, like, it livens up, the game livens up a little bit more, but it's just, when they're gone, it's just, ah, you're stuck with these new characters, it just don't do it, and to be honest, guys, like, this review would have come a lot sooner, but I got really burned out playing it. Like, look, normally when I'm playing something I really enjoy, I can spend hours upon hours with it, and time just seems to melt away. I went back and replayed the Ghost of Tsushima campaign to prep for the expansion that's going to be coming out in just a few days. And I had no problem going through that game again because of how much I enjoyed it. But that's not the case with Neo. Because in the beginning, during the first week, it starts out pretty okay. It's it's fine. It's fun. I liked going through the combat. I liked gathering pins. I liked going and exploring Shibuya. I, I really enjoyed that kind of stuff. It reminded me a lot of what I enjoyed about Persona 5 Strikers. But then you get to the second week. And the second week just, oh my god, it just drags its ass to get where it needs to go. And there's so much busy work. And it just feels like such a waste of time. And... The, uh, to the point where the idea of playing this game, and I, I said this to a, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends who also is a, a much bigger fan of, of World Ends With You and knows much more about the lore than I do. It just, I told him, it just started to feel like this mental roadblock, the idea of playing it, the idea of sitting down and committing time to it, even just getting through one day in the game. I just was like, eh, I had to force myself to sit in my chair and turn my PS5 on and, and play the goddamn thing, when I could easily just go to a different game that I have on my PS4 or my PS5 or my Switch and play that, no problem. I I, I recently rebought L.A. Noir, the, the remastered version on PS4, and I, like, I have no problem going through that game again because of how much I enjoy it. It's so rich and filled with atmosphere, and it's just so addicting to get in there and play. 
but it's like that's a 10 year old game and i look forward more to playing that than i do neo which is a sequel to a game i really enjoyed from my high school years ah <laughs> ah i'm so frustrated and another thing that i really don't like about this game is the pacing because it just again when it gets out of its own way to let you actually play the goddamn game it can be fun but oh my god does it constantly stop it, it just stops you dead in your tracks to sit you down and force you through these boring ass scenes again and again and again of just verbal diarrhea of exposition and bland characters and a plot that is so convoluted i felt like i was playing something out of kingdom hearts and it's just there's no emotional snakes at all this time around it's so predictable it just it just stops and starts and stops and starts and stops and starts and every time it stopped to sit me down to a gameplay structure that I didn't like or a story B I just was like why is this even here I just grew more and more disillusioned with this long awaited sequel to one of my favorite games of the DS oh my god oh I just, I groaned, I groaned, I audibly groaned every time another overly long cutscene filled with diuretic exposition popped up and it happened so frequently to the point where it just felt like I was sitting in like a class lecture rather than playing a video game. It's like, okay children, sit down, here's the latest fucking gobbledygook of lore you guys have to listen to and take notes on and understand it's just like oh my god and thank god thank god i played this with the japanese audio because this cringy ass dialogue i would not be able to listen to this in my native tongue i had to hear it in japanese or else i would just go bananas listening to it it just it was it was charming in the original but it came in like small chunks Especially when you're with Beat in the original. But when you are with these new characters and they talk exactly like Beat does in the original with the more like, they, there's like, there's like dude bro lingo and all that shit. Now that it's more vo voiced, it's like, oh my god, it's just, it's like nails on the chalkboard of my existence. And just, oh, it happens just enough to just annoy me. And. Because of my experience with the knowledge of the first game, I already knew what the structure was going to be like, so I never felt any drive or tension from where this narrative was going, and like, how could I get invested in Ren, Ren and his friends attempting to beat the Reaper game every week when I knew way in advance that they were going to lose each week? Like, it just feels like a giant waste of time. So much of this game feels like a waste of time. And it doesn't advance the lore in any meaningful way. And in a way, it feels like a AAA remake of the first game. Except they switched out Neku and the more interesting characters with these generic, boring motherfuckers that I don't care about at all. And something that's missing in this game is that in the original game... Whenever Neku comes in for a new week, he has something on the line. He has stakes. He has his memories. He has Shiki. There's nothing like that here. So whenever a new week starts, it's just like, okay, it just happens. Maybe something big will happen on the final day, but it's just like, okay, it shit just happens. Move along, asshole. Keep playing the game. But there's no emotional buy into this at all and the game does a piss poor job of trying to develop these characters all the potential of development of these characters feels like it's crowbarred into the last third and it's like oh guys honey this is way too little way too late at this point and when you finally start getting to the stuff that you came here to see the characters that you came here to see it just feels like I'm just I was just burned out by that point and just uh I, I just I was so tired of it and I just the idea that and originally when I get went into this game I was like right this is gonna be one of the big games I'm looking forward to this year I'm looking forward to 100%ing it completion 
I can't even be fucking bothered anymore. I don't want to deal with grinding through the days again, the scrambles again to get enough points again for these pins. I just, I can't. I just, my brain just goes, no. It just throws his hands up and just goes, no, don't do it. You're not going to like it. And I, I, I just, I really wanted to like this game. I really wanted to. And it's so frustrating that I don't. And something else that could have been really cool is the time travel mechanic, which every few days or so, there is a, a, a day where that is dedicated to time traveling to fix something that happened before. But the game, and it's a cool idea, and it's a cool power that Ren has, but the game just abuses the shit out of using it as a crutch to just extend, artificially extend the length of this game. To the point where it just becomes intolerable and it, what should have been a really cool concept just made me roll my fucking eyes and go oh christ here we go again every time it pops up every time you have to sit through the same cutscenes again and again and again you have to go through the same events again and again through this time travel mechanic and it just it's such a neat idea but they fucked it up so badly in this game to the point where it just becomes just a boring chore and I just there's so much in this game that I want to like there there are like little things too like the the social media network kind of thing that's in it I like that the side quests they're not annoying surprisingly they're not annoying the combat is fine the the beautiful visuals are here the music is here it's just everything else fucking sucks it's just everything else that really needed to hit the writing and the characters and the storytelling and the pacing and the structure. It just sucks. It just completely sucks. I was like in denial for the first few days that I was playing it when I got to the second week. I was just like, no, this can't be as boring as I think it is. But I, I shoot you guys not. I literally was going, I was literally planning on, like, having this review come out, like, a week ago, or two weeks ago, because I plan on playing the game a lot more, but I just couldn't fucking do it, I just, I, I just, ugh, I just had to sit my ass down and force myself to play it just to get to this point where I can comfortably come here and talk to you guys about it, and it, it just, fuck, fuck, man, this, this game should be better, but it's not. And, and I made it this far. I've made it this far in the channel without another big disappointment coming up. But th here we go. The, the, that, that streak has been broken. It's Neo. The world ends with you. A sequel to one of a really good game on the DS that everyone's been wanting a sequel for a long time. Or at least fans. And... I was worried too. I was worried because the the Switch version of The World Ends With You sucked so hard. The port sucked so bad that I was worried that Square Enix would go, oh, well, people aren't buying it because this means people don't want a sequel. Well, it turns out they had a sequel in development anyway. And that's great. That's exciting. But now that it's out, it kind of sucks. Yeah. It's just, look, if you guys have never played The World Ends With You, don't start with this game. Like, do not start with this game. And even then, like, like, don't play the Switch version. If you have a DS, if you have a, a, an, an iPad, actually it works pretty well on phones and iPads from what I understand. I would go play those versions. The DS one is actually the way it's meant to be played. The, with the dual screens. And I guess the iPad will come close to that, but just with the touchpad and the little, like, pointy thing that you get with the DS, the pen, whatever. Play it that way. If you really want some World Ends With You and if you've never gotten into the series, don't play Neo. Don't start with Neo. Start with the original. If you like that, then maybe give Neo a try for a discount. If you, because, you know, people out there that are playing it that I know on the channel, they might really like it. They might be shocked to hear that I, I did not like it very much. 
But I gotta come here with you guys with the truth. I'm not here to tell you guys what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you guys what I thought. And I thought Neo The World Ends With You was a massive letdown after all these years of waiting for it. And hoping and praying that it would come to fruition. But now it's here. And it kind of sucks. And that makes me very sad. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like to see, subscribe. Let me know what you think about Neo The World Ends With You. And as always, I'm Razorblade Mango. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.